Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Paper and Moose. Today is a different type of video, a different type of day. Today I'm going to be taking you into the historic Easton Cemetery located in Easton, Pennsylvania. Um, you can see the entryway behind me with that magnificent arch. The cemetery was founded in 1849 and back then was around 40 acres. Fast forward to today, it is around 87 acres and is the home to more than 29,000 people. Some of the people buried here are very notable local Easton area residents who have made their mark on Easton's history. Others are notable American history people, including a signer of the Declaration of Independence and the person who created the football helmet. They also have a vast array of beautiful Victorian tombstones here. You know, back then, everything had to be hand carved versus today when there's a lot of laser cut technology and more simple headstones and tombstones. But back then, they liked to go all out. There's some beautiful artwork, beautiful carvings, and beautiful inscriptions. The cemetery has requested that there is no uh, videotaping inside. So what I will be doing is taking photographs of some of the tombstones that I think you know, are just beautiful and that I wanna share with you, including some of the notable local residents and then the um, American history people that have found their home here. So join me today as we do a different type of exploration. Cemeteries don't have to just be a place of sadness or a place of loss. They are a place of memory and they can be beautiful memories. You know, if you think about the different inscriptions or the different images that the loved ones chose to have put on the tombstones, it's because they wanted the loved one's story to be told throughout the, you know, throughout the years. And you can see that in the tombstones and in the, you know, the carvings and the inscriptions. So let's go inside and see, you know, see what beauty we can find amongst this historic cemetery in Easton, Pennsylvania. All photographs of the tombstones in the cemetery were taken by myself. Um, the other images of the people, those were taken from the historic EastonCemetery.org website, which I highly recommend that you look up if you want to learn more about the cemetery and about those that are buried there. So the first stone that I visited was that of Samuel Moon. He was born February 22nd, 1805, and passed away June 14th, 1860. He was born to a Quaker family in Downingtown, Pennsylvania, and he took an interest in drawing from an early age. He moved to Easton in 1830 and continued his interest in the arts. And he painted religious scenes, portraits, landscapes, and also miniature portraits. While residing in Easton, he made his money for his family, which included himself, his wife, and their eight children from painting. He painted the portraits of wealthy Easton locals and also painted portraits from those in Philadelphia and Bucks County. Uh, the Siegel Museum in Easton holds many of his portraits on display today. And probably last year I went to the museum and I fell in love with the portraits. They, in their little museum shop, they actually have a small booklet that you can purchase that have copies of the portraits that he had painted and they, they're lovely. So if you Google Samuel Moon artist, then you'll be able to see some of the portraits that he has. But his tombstone is very nice. It has the eagle, the top has a train with a starburst and then a moon is on the side. So his actual stone is by where the, the American flag is located. This is the Bruch Memorial. My apologies if I am pronouncing the name incorrectly uh, for Dr. W.J.H. Bruch. This gravestone is the memorial stone for him. It is the largest gravestone in the cemetery. When the cemetery um, before, Prior to it changing its main entrance, this would have been the first gravestone that visitors to the cemetery and um, you know people coming into the cemetery for a funeral. This is the stone that they would have seen first. This was built in 1885 at the cost of twenty thousand dollars. The doctor left instructions in his will for this monument to be built for two reasons as a memorial, but then also as a source, source of beauty for all that would enter into the cemetery. And it is really 
something to see. And if you can imagine, you know, during the, the time of the late 1800s, early 1900s, people coming in and this is the first stone that they see, I'm sure that it took their breath away. This is George Taylor. He was the signer of the Declaration of Independence. He was born in Ireland, but then came to Philadelphia after receiving his education. While he was here, he worked for an iron manufacturer and he would find his way to Easton in 1764. He was elected to the Provincial Assembly in 1775 and then chosen as one of the replacements to the Continental Congress and became a signer of the Declaration of Independence. His memorial stone, as you can see, it's situated in front of the chapel. That was erected in 1855, 1855, but his body was not moved to the memorial stone until 1870. Prior to that movement, his body had been interned at another Easton cemetery. The stone is also very nice. There's a large eagle at the top with some great carvings. Here we have Belle Archer. I really loved her gravestone. Um, she was one of the most photographed women in America in the 1890s. She was an actress. She was born in Easton and then later moved with her family to Philadelphia where she began her acting career when she was a teenager. She passed away due to injury sustained from tripping on a broken board of a train platform and her body was taken back to the Lehigh Valley area, back to Easton via the Lehigh Valley Railroad, and her funeral was held in the chapel um, at the Easton Cemetery, which we, we saw the chapel in the um, other photo. The granite marker with the medallion, that was built in 1901. I love this stone. I love her, you know, her portrait on the stone. I'm also a big fan of the gravestones that have the photograph medallion on them. Um, I, I just think it's nice to be able to have an idea of what the person you know, looked like and who they were. So that's why I do love seeing when they have the small oval, you know, circular medallions on the stones. I think it just gives it a nice touch. And then people that are visiting, they can put a face to a name and appreciate who, who is there? This was interesting. This is George Barclay. He was a local Lafayette College football player, and he was credited with inventing the first football helmet. Um, as the Easton Cemetery website phrases it, because I thought they said it very well, in order to protect his handsome head and avoid cauliflower ears, because during that time there weren't any you know, safety helmets for football players, Barclay designed special headgear that consisted of three heavy leather straps. His invention attracted national attention at a game in 1896 when Lafayette not only upset a very powerful Penn team, but went on to become the national champions that year. In front of 12,000 fans at that game, George Barclay stepped in for the team captain and led the team to a 6-4 point victory, scoring all points himself. So not only was he the inventor of the football helmet, but he also was a very good football player. In 1896, he dropped out of school and became a professional football player. He also went to dental school. And then in 1908, he returned back to his alma mater of Lafayette, where he coached for the 1908 football season. And sadly, he passed away due to appendicitis. You can see his stone. It's a very simple stone and it is in the, the bottom left of the picture. This memorial stone has somewhat of a following at the cemetery. This is for two people, Lucy Barnett and her brother, William Barnett. Um, Lucy, she was just a few months shy of her second birthday when she passed away. Her inscription is on the front of the stone, her brother, who was lost at sea, and that's how he met his death. Um, his inscription is on the back of the stone. For as long as people can remember, visitors have been leaving um, you know, little gifts and trinkets, toys on this gravestone. As you can see here, 
You have dolls, stuffed animals, matchbox cars, a seashell. The open book in the front is a Bible. There's a stuffed dog. It looks like some of these have been there for a long time. But this is a tradition that has continued. No one really knows who's putting these items there. No one sees anyone putting these items there. But it has continued for many years, um, you know, for this little girl and then for her brother. So the next few slides are images of some of the gravestones, tombstones that I thought were beautiful. Um, this one is a tree trunk. Tree trunks, they symbolize mortality. Cut trunks symbolize mortality. Um, they also you know, symbolize the all-covering love of God. You know, the Victorians, their tombstones were amazing, to say the least. And here you have an anchor carved into a tree. You have some ferns and some other foliage. It's, it's a very beautiful tombstone. And easy to spot in the cemetery, too. Here we have an angel or face above this. You can't see it, but there was an open book with this page open like they were you know, in the breeze, like the movement. It, it conveyed great movement in the, the carving of the book. But I just love, I love the face and the carving of the face for this. These were amazing. These are two large crosses carved to kind of look like tree trunk crosses. They're, they're very big, they're massive, they're beautiful. So if you can imagine someone back then, was it 1903 is when this person passed away, carving these and how long that took and the time and the dedication to do this. That's where you can see how cemeteries, as I said, they're not just a place of sorrow and you know, and sadness. Granted, what they hold there represents sadness because we, we lose people that we love and cherish. But walking through and seeing these stones and these monuments that loved ones you know, commissioned essentially to have as memorials to their loved ones shows a great you know, care, a great sense of love and a great sense of wanting this person to have something beautiful that would last through time and they have and now others can go and enjoy these tombstones and gravestones but you know realize that all the effort and care and love that the families put into having these placed on their loved ones graves this was another beautiful one um, this was a duo again you have the crosses carved out of you know it looks like it's supposed to be representing like a tree with the scrolls with their names on the side. Very, very pretty. Intricate details. I loved this. This is a very large statue on the edge of the cemetery um, overlooking one of the hills and it's, it's huge. It's very, very tall. It can't be missed, but I love the whole, the whole look of it and the carving itself is, is beautiful. Here's a fine example of a wrought iron fence. This encompassed a whole plot area for a family. And there are many examples of this Victorian wrought iron, wrought iron fence throughout the cemetery. Again, other beautiful pieces of, of art that took many, many hours, you know, weeks, days, months to make. I hope that you all enjoyed this presentation. Again, it was a little bit different, but I like to do that. And how does it relate to ephemera? I think that while you know ephemera is, is fleeting, it's, it's not meant to last. Obviously tombstones, gravestones, cemeteries, they, they are built to last. And the stones that we put there are built to withstand the test of time, as you can see from the stones that are there now, but it has to do with ephemera because it can lead us back to ephemera. If you know we aren't able to trace family history through paper, we can always go back to more physical objects such as tombstones, such as cemeteries, because those are there, you know, water, wind, 
it, it can affect them, but it's not like paper where it's just going to disintegrate easily. You know, the stones do have wear and tear, but ultimately they're still there. And you know, you can go and visit, you can trace your family history. You can go back and visit the area where your loved ones, relatives, friends are buried. And you know, that's different from ephemera, but I think it all ties into it. What, ephem what we can't find in ephemera, we might be able to find in the tombstones and the gravestones. And these essentially can lead us back to ephemera when we trace other records from you know, cemetery records, deeds, and, and things like that. So I think it all comes full, full circle. And if any of you are ever in the Easton, Pennsylvania area and you want to visit this cemetery, I, I think it would be a great idea. The office out in front, they actually have two different pamphlets that are free that you can take. They're little booklets. Uh, the one is for notables that are buried there. And the other booklet is for notable Lafayette um, members that are buried in the cemetery. But it's a beautiful cemetery to walk around. Lots and lots of history there. Just thinking of the people that have ventured through that cemetery and the people that remain there. You know, there, there's a lot of history there. And again, if you're ever in the Eastern area, definitely go and, and visit. I, I think you will be... It'll be, I don't want to say enjoyable, because many will say, well, walking through a cemetery isn't enjoyable, but I think it can be if you appreciate, you know, what was there and just learning about the history of the tombstones and the people that are there. So thank you all for watching. Um, you know, stay tuned for the next adventure, the next history lesson, I guess you could say, the next um, history behind the paper. So thank you all again, and until next time, have a great day.